There is a terminology area we call concourse. It is an open space or hall and in a passenger's building. So it's an integral part of a terminal building where passengers do wait for their destination aircraft to, uh, and to get loaded. This is a uh, this is a Denver International Airport, but there are many airports that has more or less same same design for waiting area. It's an open spaces design. Now, what is a function of a terminal building? To provide various facilities for crews and passengers move from aircraft or onto aircraft efficiently. What are their functions? Transportation change from train to plane, from car to train. Ticketing process, customs, clearance, and immigration control in case of international flights. And if it is not just a ticketing process, and for domestic flight, a passenger go direct to the boarding and then uh, to the terminal building and then to the aircraft. And obviously, uh, there are shopping, the toilets, eating, meeting, business conference, uh, mosques, so forth. And there are rest houses. And then certain airline agencies have their own guest house to facilitate their business, to promote their business. They have their own, maybe gyms and the computers and all those things. Sometimes they serve food even to the passengers as well. Now, the terminal buildings has, is, has been uh, designed in two concepts. The horizontal distribution, how the facilities are designed horizontally, as well as the vertical distribution. Let's understand, let's try to uh, understand the concept of horizontal distribution. Uh, the common the oldest one is what we call the pier and finger. As you can see here, there is a terminal building and outside terminal building, the aircraft are parked perpendicular to it. It's very simple. Then we call a terminal the same, but there are multiple aircraft, so we call this terminal or linear. Then this is a curvilinear in which their cars are parked in a curve. So terminal can have three options, simple, uh, linear, and curvy linear. All these are called a terminal of Then they were called a finger concept in which you can see there is a terminal building and a building is being projected out and their craft are parked on both sides of it. Then there is a satellite, we are satellite. This is what the Karachi airport is now, uh, as well as the uh, Alamo Iqbal International Airport. Most of the airports in Pakistan have now this pair satellite terminal concept. And then there is a remote that means they are not connected directly to building, but they are connected that their their craft are far, far from the places and they are being carried uh, by a train or something like one in a Kuala Lumpur, Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. Uh, you are boarded here uh, or off boarded here and then uh, the train or bus actually there there's a train that can drop to you to the terminal building and off you go. Then there is a transporter, it's simply a ter terminal building. You are taken out from the trans uh, terminal building and then with the help of the bus, 
you are allowed you are you are allowed you are asked to sit in the bus and then take you to the aircraft this is a transporter concept and then there is an hybrid concept so let's discuss the pair finger terminal this terminal configuration evolved during the 1950s when gate concourses were added to the simple terminal building design a concourse is actually defined as an open space where path meet passengers are usually processed at the simple terminal location and then routed down a pier where aircraft are parked in the finger slots of gates for board the advantages it has a centralized system but then it has the congestion in the terminal building at peak times and people have to walk have to walk a longer distances from the base this remote satellite terminal involves a single terminal where all ticketing and passenger processes take place connected to this are numerous numerous concourses that lead to one or more satellite structures at the end of each concourse the aircraft are parked in a cluster this increases the distance a passenger must walk to get from one terminal to another or one gate to another people mover systems are employed in these settings to reduce these walk distances these systems can be high high speed escalators monorails or electric powered cars the design concept lends itself to a compact central terminal which is difficult to expand without disrupting airport operations there is then there is a central terminals offer high you see this is a central building and the gates uh, that are apart either in this direction east west north south but there is a problem that long distance from the check in counter to the gate need high speed escalators monorail or electric powered car to reduce the walking distance then in this concept the transporter terminal at the word suggest in this concept passengers are transported to and from the building to the park area the mobile lounge can also be used as holding room for waiting passengers at gate positions airplanes are parked at gates placed along parallel rows several sets of parallel parking rows can be created as increase traffic in such expansion necessary this design and excellent expansion capabilities and can maintain the pace with this airport usage this concept at get aircraft can be parked remotely from the terminal buildings thus increasing the amount of aircraft in planning and deplaning passage air par airplane taxiing time to and from the runway is decreased as well as the amount of aircraft in general noise around the terminal and the you can see that these passengers are transported to and from the building to the park area then there is a semi circular terminal it is a short distance but and it has got low low cost construction in chion airport in Korea is one of that set. Allows even more aircraft to park nose to the terminal building while maintaining short walking distance from the airport entrance to the aircraft. Nose in means the aircraft is parked towards the building. It is a special variation of the linear concept. Some save some space compared to straight linear terminal. provide short walking distance properly designed for terminal passenger this curb line which has been implemented in some of the largest airports as well it can be confusing to the passengers due to round trip sure requires a very extensive flight information service so that the passengers doesn't get lost especially the transfer passengers for instance a person need to go to us he bounds he then first go to dubai and then from the bike to uh, to us so at this time if he says if he has a flight boarding time between the two that half say one hour then it becomes difficult some five for the, for the older passengers to even find their where your that aircraft is parked 
Let's try to understand the system. Say, I want to go to yes. I uh, hired, uh, actually, I bought a ticket for Emirates L9. What it will do? And I set the time. Say, if I reach at 12 p.m., my next flight will be at, at 13 p.m. for US. Now, what happens is that I, I landed very safely at 12 p.m. exactly. Sometimes you may get late because of uh, some unknown reasons. And now you have 50, 60 minutes to find a plane and to get water. It's not actually 60 minutes. Some It's to have only 15 minutes because the gates are already open. You have to go to the ticket counter, take the boarding pass sometimes once again and then you have to know your gate where where your next airplane is required and if you get confused there are chances that you may not be boarded to the same flight. This is where the passengers uh, get confused. So there should be an extensive air information system where the passengers are informed that this flight, US bound flight this 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 is it will be from this gate and this gate is in that direction everywhere so that's it's a very good information system that passengers always know where he has to walk and sometimes he has to walk very long so it's very uh, necessary that our extensive information system should be placed requires some sort of people mover to transport manpower required might be higher due to duplication of services usually long haul distance result from transfer passengers transfer of baggage between terminals is also a problem then there is hybrid in which linear deregulation airport management expand more modified terminal areas to accommodate almost constantly changing environments as a result, many airport terminal geometries expanses and expanded in an ad hoc manner, leading to hybrid terminal with geometries incorporating features of two or more of the base configurations. Issues include congestion, long walking distances, confusing direction, limited amenities, and passenger services became popular issues of that criticism. As a result, airport planner began to redevelop terminal area design, focus on strategic planning and design of terminals that can accommodate requirements of accessing ground vehicles, passengers and aircraft with sufficient flexibility to adapt to ever-changing levels of growth and system behavior. This is the hybrid system you see, one, one aircraft, one pair of aircraft and then there are other pairs of then they have to be transported you see this uh, maybe it can be connected from by via underground so it's a very good big airport long distance have to be kept sometimes you connect these airports via underground rail system train system or not, not rail system it's a train system actually a train uh, lights on a rail so actually it's, it's a train system that transport passenger from one place to other and this is very uh, important for those especially for the those transfer passengers you have to take their next flight to the destination now another important design consideration is the apron and gate system aircraft this can be defined the way the aircraft is parked to the building nose in parking, angle nose in parking, angle nose out parking, parallel parking and remote parking. This is angle nose in parking. Planes, uh, this this nose here, so we can squeeze in, this out and then this is the parallel parking, the terminal. This is the elevation showing the parking. Then, there are vertical distribution 
how the floors are divided. So we call it a one floor terminals where all the activities take place only on the one floor. There one and a half floor terminals, two floor terminals, and then these are used to separate arrival and departure floors, like like in China Airport, you go from the top, uh, depart, whether domestic or else. And then uh, when you come from your destination, you go from the ground part. So it's a very simple concept that we call a two level uh, concept or two floor terminal concept. Activities are divided, departure and arrivals are divided. And divided and so that we need to make things simple for the passengers. So the messengers, if a new passengers to that airport, get no, should not get confused where from he has to depart or where he has to arrive. So this is a vertical distribution. This is a single single level, right? And then this is one and a half level, and then this is a two level concept. They are connected with the uh, with, with the stairs and obviously wires uh, or lifts uh, to go on the deck. Now one and a half table provides a single level cup site process at grade. Then there is a two level building departures on this on the second level the boarding deck. This is good for passengers arriving and departing close inside the airport provides increased curb space. This is one of uh, how this system works. One level system, one and a half level system, two level system. One another view of terminal buildings. This is what I'm saying that they are connected within the hybrid point to uh, the terminal building, the trains are usually there. One of that example uh, was is, is Kuala Lumpur, where in Malaysia that you are transported from the aircraft to the uh, terminal building via train. It hardly takes five minutes, save a long walking distance. So what what is the expectation? Convenience and comfort, short walking distances, and clear clear signage. That's that's very important in local language as well as in the foreign language, especially in English. Some people who have long journey they want to have eating facilities, and some people would like to shop from there. But there are duty free shops which whatever they buy will not charge extra so uh, they, they want to get a shop to serve as souvenirs uh, to their friends or uh, their friends. There should be short queues, enough counters that there's short queue people not get confused with attending long queues. This is what all passenger expects. For the moment he reaches the airport, all his process like uh, ticketing, uh, boarding, uh, check-in, uh, custom, they, they, they are done in, in a minimum amount of time. So, easy access from road or rail, efficient baggage delivery, full range of services, convenient parking, ground transportation, clean building, simple procedures that are not confusing, safe and secure environment, all the, what all the passengers want uh, from the terminal building and from, every, uh, from, from the people who are providing them and uh, airport and uh, the aircraft services or traveling services, air traffic services. Uh, you must not forget that there 
a terminal building must have an adequate parking facilities. Public parking for airline passengers, they should be nearer to the terminal building. Off airport parking for airline passengers, far away from terminal with lower charges. Separate parking for airport employees, far away from terminal area, airport workers using bus to go to the terminal. And car rental parking for taxi or airport limousines close to the terminal building. So all of these are designed to facilitate the passengers. The more, the more nearer the parking is, the less time will be required by the passengers, and it will become easier for uh, him or her to travel. The more time you will get, the more get confused and you would not like the facilities of the terminal building. So as an engineer, we want to facilitate the people, facilitate the people who wants to travel here. Then another concept is a baggage handling system. Their functions moving passengers baggage from the check-in area to the departure area, from one gate to another during transfers and from arrival gate to the baggage claim area. It should be faster, it should be safe. The moment you are free from your, if you are an international passenger, the moment you are free from uh, all those immigration, uh, immigration um, process, you, you want to leave as quickly as you can. Then you have to go, first you have to go and collect your baggage. If, if, you have, if it is not efficient system, uh, you have to wait for long and sometimes uh, you, on all the all situation you find your baggage is not being transported with you and uh, then it creates a confusion and it creates a great panic among the passengers. And sometimes people find that the baggage are not safe, it is open and some things are missing. So this is the goals of the system that it should be faster and it should be safe. So there are three methods, tug and cart, labor intensive, manual method. What is done is all the labors are applied. They just load the bags, they load it on the aircraft, then they do it manually and then this is done. Then this another thing is a carry cart system. In that multiple packages are places in one cart, not automatically sorted, typically used in automated system. So this is another way. Now there are some VIPs ways as well. So if you have business class passengers, they put the uh, put their baggage in such a manner that whenever the aircraft is parked, uh, the first loaded uh, first baggage should be loaded of those VIP people so that they can get it easily, get it quickly. And then there comes the economic reason. Also, if, if you have a flight with multiple destinations, then those are sorted in the origin, the time of uh, with, with the destination. So if you are going to say for Dubai, uh, if your destination ends at Dubai, uh, your baggage will be always in the hand. But if you are going to US, and the, if the same aircraft is taken to the US, then your baggage will be placed after the uh, after the baggage of the Dubai air passengers, and then so that uh, nothing get confused. Nowadays, there is a DCV destination coded vehicle system. It's a very uh, good system and a very efficient system, just like a bar coded system we are using in every field now. Each card contains a single piece of baggage. It is automatically sorted, little or no human interaction required, and that's how uh, the safety of your baggage is okay? because mo uh, not many labors, not many people involved in sorting. And if uh, God forbid your bags, you have not brought bag is not properly locked, there are less chances that it could be open because it is done by machine. So, so what happens is that a DCV 
destinated coated vehicles from the terminal buildings they are went to concourse one from this from end from this they are transported to this point and then from this point to the aircraft directly there is an automatic scanner that scans the level on the baggage and each of this baggage are you know then uh, be kept separate for each passengers and they are, uh, are kept in the order of their destination and obviously the order of their uh, priority business passengers then economic passengers and then so what is the baggage handed process check-in agent puts a tag on the page tags owner flight number final destination intermediate connections and airlines then automatic barcode scanner after reading the barcode the system will know where the bag is at all times hundreds of computers keep track of that bag then hundreds of conveyors with junctions connecting all of them sort all of them from the different airlines and send them to dcv that are headed to the proper terminal and gates and then headed to proper destination move back quickly five times faster than the conveyors and tech by the so god forbid should you have lost your package there is always a code that is given to you at the time of check-in and if you go to the people airline people they will trace where your bag is now maybe they have left erroneously or maybe it will be coming from the the flight or it may be erroneously so all things are known generally airlines take their responsibility so even if you go to your destination they will uh, actually provide your bag they will transport your bag to your destination as a token of the recognition of their mistakes so that's end my this lecture the next lecture will be about the airport parking thank you very much uh, have a nice